All right, so we are going to talk about a phenomenon known as percent yield. And the best way to do that is to do that thing. But before we get into that, first of all, remember a couple of things that we are always going to sort of use this model for getting through these stoichiometry problems. And if grams is started and you need to get to moles, you're going to use the periodic table moles to moles is going to happen in every problem and that's going to get you from one substance to a different substance and that's where you use the balanced equation and then if you need grams again you're going to use that periodic table a second time so percent yield is what you receive divided by what you expect times 100 if you don't understand with percentages that's what percent yield is and in the case of this little movie here you will see that this guy is, um, he is trying to get his stuck candy out, right? His candy stuck in that machine. And what he wants to do is get it out. So currently, the reason he's so upset is because he has, his percent yield is currently zero. So he was expecting, uh, uh, he received nothing and he was expecting one of the candies to fall out. So his percent yield right now is zero and that's why he's so upset. However, as you can see here, as it goes on, I'm gonna need to turn this down because he's yelling in my ear, all right? He's trying to get that candy there and you will see after a few more kicks, trying to get that out, that there's this kind gentleman right here who just says, what's going on? And he looks, he's like, look, I think I got some money. Let me get this guy to calm down. He gives him some money. And then the guy is beside himself with joy because look, he wipes a tear off his eye. He's so happy. He's finally going to be able to get the candy he wants, which is right there again. He's making sure he has enough money. And then when he puts the money into the machine, he's now expecting, in theory, he's supposed to have two. Um, he's expecting now two candies. So his expectant went from one to two. And as we see here, when the expected candy, oh, he hits the button. It takes him a second time because he's so excited, but watch here. Here's the thing right here. And when he hits it, that one falls, but the next one gets stuck and he can't believe it. And the reason he's upset again is because his percent yield is still not where he wants it. He's now gotten one out of the two he expected, which is 50%, but that's not enough for him. So he's going to go back to work here and start kicking the machine some. And when he kicks the machine, you'll see right there that the one falls and now he's got two. So the whole point of that was that, I guess I can toggle that now. All right, he was trying to get his yield better. And by um, at first kicking the machine, it didn't help, he still had the zero. When the guy gave him some extra money, he was hoping to get two now, but only one fell out, which was 50%. And then by kicking it some more, he was able to get the full 100% uh, yield. All right. So that takes us to this question here. So if we do this in chemistry, we're going to expect every time we put chemicals in to get some chemicals out. So the balanced equation here, which I will do in colors, I guess. So he has, in this case, BLCLO32. All right, and mixing that with sodium nitrate. And the hope is that that stuff will become, uh, and we'll need a two of these, uh, will become, let's make it green, I guess, barium nitrate and sodium chlorate. And then again, that sodium chlorate has a two in front of it. All right, so the two things we're dealing with, though, for this problem, if you read it, it says, uh, it tells you how much you got. So therefore, we don't need to figure out the expected. That is our, or not the expected, that's what we got in the lab. So this is the lab BANO3. And what we need, though, is to start with this 25 grams of uh, the stuff. 
and figure out how much BANO3, the green stuff, we're going to get. So we're trying to figure out how much of this stuff we're going to get from the 25 grams. So we're looking for the theoretical or the amount we expect. So our given is going to start with the red here. We are given 25 grams of the BACLO3 2, and we're trying to get to that green, trying to get to the BANO3 2. All right, so we do that at first by turning grams into moles. And we get that from the periodic table. So if you look up barium on the periodic table, you'll see it's like 137, I think. Chlorine is 35.5. There's two of those. And oxygen is 16. There's three times two or six oxygens. So the total here is going to be, if you add all that up, 304.2 grams and one mole of BACLO3. All right, so that gets us out of grams and into moles. And as we said, every time you do one of these problems, you're going to need to use this mole-to-mole -mole ratio from the balanced equation. And the balanced equation is telling us for every one mole of BACLO3-2, there are one mole, there's one mole of barium nitrate. Barium nitrate. All right, so one mole of these for every one mole of those. And that's where we're getting that. And now we got to get out of moles into grams, so we're going to need the periodic table again. So one mole of the barium nitrate is going to get us, uh, if you count that up, there's nitrogen, there's two of those, so 14 times 2 is 28. Oxygen, there's 3 times 2 or 6 of those. 16 times 6 is 96. And then the barium again, which is 137, I think. So that gets you 261.3 grams. So now getting grams of the barium nitrate, we multiply 25 times 261.3 and divide by the 304.2. And what we get here is you expect 21.4 grams of the barium nitrate. So that's by multiplying 25 times 261 and dividing by 304.2. So this is our expected all right, that's calculated. So our percent yield then, if we're going to do our percent yield, our percent yield is going to be what we got, and that's up here, 12.7 grams, divided by what we expect, and what we expect is what we just calculated here is 21.4 grams. And when you take that uh, and divide it, you're going to get 0.593, which hopefully you realize is 59.3%. So you got 59.3% of the material that you thought you could when you get 12.7 grams out of a reaction with 25 grams of barium chloride. That is what we do. So let's get into this again. This sort of shows you why uh, you're kind of concerned with this. So platinum chloride, because it has platinum in it, it costs $1,000. If you have five grams of platinum chloride, that costs you $1,000. So 5.00 grams of platinum chloride. And that's a lot of money. And you want to get this platinum out of it. So you're trying to get out of it this platinum here. So we're going to convert platinum chloride. Oops back to blue. So we got to turn this platinum chloride uh, grams into moles of platinum chloride. And that will come from the periodic table. So the periodic table will tell us that one platinum is uh, 195 and then chlorine is 35.5 times 2. So that comes out to be 266 grams in one mole. So that's a 266. So that comes from the periodic table. That gets us to moles, and now we can use moles of platinum chloride to get to moles of platinum. And here's where we're changing colors. And the changing colors happens from the balanced equation. So we're going to use the one that's understood in front of that platinum chloride and the one from that platinum. So we're going to switch like that. Uh, that gets us to moles. we got to go all the way to grams because our 
are given here is 2.35 grams. That's what we got in lab. So we got to get this moles of platinum to grams. So we're going to go from one mole of platinum to uh, on, the, on the periodic table, you're going to see that's 195 grams. So this comes from the periodic table as well. And this one came from the balanced equation. So if you think about that highway, um, right, we started with grams of one substance. We converted that substance to moles using the periodic table. Then we went from moles of one substance to moles of another substance using the balanced equation. And then we had to use the periodic table again to get that moles into grams. And that's exactly what we've done here. Well, it's what we did here too, right? We got this from the periodic table. We got this from the balanced equation. And we got this from the periodic table. Same thing happened here. We got this from the periodic table. We got the next step from the balanced equation. And then the last step we got from the periodic table. So when you multiply 5 times 195 and divide by 266, you get 3.66 grams of platinum. So that's what you would expect, right? This is calculated. So our percent yield is the uh, got over expected, right? So what we expected is what we calculated. So that's the 3.66 grams. What we got is right here in the equation is 2.35 in the question, rather. The question tells us 2.35 grams is what we recovered. And when you divide those two, don't ask me why that's happening, you get 0.64 or 64%. So 64% of what you started with is what you got, which means 64% of that $1,000 is what you recovered, which is not a great yield. And that's why this is important. You're trying to figure out what your yield is. And yield in this case is talking about the yield in a, uh, it's talking about the yield as in like the money that you get as opposed to the yield of a car when you're going to let someone else get in front of you. All right. Hopefully that's helpful. That is percent yield. And that's the last thing we got to do.